This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, hello, everyone out there in publishing and author land. This is Judith Bryles with Author You, your guide to book publishing. And what I love about the coming fall is that it means book sales, humongous book sales. But what authors don't think about is all the avenues that they can go. And in fact, our topic today is one of the ones that is often in hindsight. They just think about is the add-on later. And with me is an expert in going down one of those avenues, as well as other avenues. Amy Collins with New Shelves will be with me. What I love about her, she's funny, she's sharp, and she's really smart. She has lots of tons of industry tips and really implemental and hands-on tips. Uh, ideas and advice that you can use right now today as you're listening. You're going to be taking notes. She's been a book buyer for a chain of bookstores as well as a sales director for a large book and magazine publisher. And for the last 10 years, she's been really running New Shell. So she's one of the top uh, marketing and book sales uh, firms in the country, especially for the indie and small book publisher. So Amy's with me, but we're deep diving into this thing called libraries. So you've got a book. Now, where should you go to get your hands to find the super fans, your readers to be? Well, I think the library needs to be at the top of your list. So today, that's just what we're going to do. We're going to look at a variety of avenues into library land. Amy's going to be our guide to take us through the magic portal of books, whether it's for kids, for adults, for whoever you are. So, hi, Amy. How are you? Well, I'm well. How are you, Judith? Thank you so much for having me on. Good, good. All right. So, let's just jump into this. And, and I guess let's, you know, I'm a huge fan of libraries. I, I love libraries because when they buy books, one, they pay for them, and two, they never return them. I just think it's a very cool relationship for an author to have. It really is. It, it's fantastic. And, and what I'm hearing, though, from authors and from small presses over and over again is the, the, a very common sentence that they'll, they'll turn to me on the phone or in person and they'll say, but aren't libraries dying? Aren't libraries going away? People don't go to libraries, do they? And nothing could be further from the truth. It was true 10 years ago, but absolutely nothing could be further from the truth now. Libraries are growing. They're ex- in foot traffic, their budgets are going up. What they provide and what we can provide to libraries is changing and growing and evolving every day. They are the future in many ways for small presses, and I strongly recommend any of your listeners to listen in for the next few segments to learn how to maximize their dollars by getting into, into libraries as well as some of the other stores they're focused on. You know, Amy, I was uh, over at my library, local library on Sunday, this past Sunday, and I was so irritated because it didn't open till one o'clock. And one of the things that happened with those cutbacks you referred to 10 years ago is that those libraries, um, that's where the budgets cuts came. And so they cut these hours. They did all these things. It was packed, packed with people. I mean, people, there was a line waiting to go in for it to open. And I, I think that's what's being experienced. And I'll certainly get a pulse when I'm at the Library Association meeting in Colorado uh, in October, uh, where we'll be up there mm-hmm. with a booth. I think it's huge. Well, the American Library Journal, uh, the American Journal just came out with their annual survey report for 2015. Mm-hmm. And they surveyed over 40,000 librarians responded. Over 40,000 librarians responded, and they found out that library materials, they, they refer to everything they bring in as material. They refer to their customers as patrons. So as we, as we, as we chat about this, we're going to talk about patrons, and we're going to talk about materials. Materials can be e-books, 
books, audio books, DVDs, downloadable videos, other, there's a number of things, but their materials budgets are up nationwide on average of $800,000 per major library system overall. That is a huge increase. And, and of course, what's, what happens with the systems is they all share. They have all this going back and forth. So you're thinking, well, 800,000, you know, if there's 25 or 50 libraries in a system, that's, that doesn't go that far. But they have all this mutual sharing. So it really is a good lump sum. Well, and when you think about ebooks, that if you're in one library in Cincinnati, you're in all libraries in Cincinnati. And that is on average. There are libraries that serve populations of 10,000 people or less, and their annual budget is only about $30,000 on average. Okay, that's not a lot of money. But there are lots, lots of library systems that serve as populations over 500,000. Just about any mid-sized city has, you know, 500,000 people or more, mid to good-sized city, and their average budget is almost $4.5 million a year. So well, you, you convince me we need to go to libraries, libraries, and I hope all our listeners are hearing that. I'm sorry? I said you convinced me that we all should be going to libraries. I, th I think that's where it should be at the top of the list. <laughs> and while and one other thing that came out of this Library Journal annual nationwide report that I really want to share with people is they go, yes, but I'm not Random House. I'm not HarperCollins. They won't buy from a small press. 25% of the libraries said that, they, that in 2014 they did spend money outside of their standard vendor channels. That means that if they couldn't get it from Ingram or Baker and Taylor or one of the big wholesalers, 25% of the libraries were willing to buy a book directly from a small press or from someone they didn't normally buy from. So getting your book, and we're going to talk a lot today about getting your book into the right wholesalers for libraries, both ebook wholesalers, I'm going to throw some new names at you, and yeah. print book and audiobook wholesalers. But even if you're not in those wholesalers, 25% of the libraries out there said that they would consider buying your book. Well, that's huge. And, and, I, and I am, I'm, I'm ready with my pencil to write down these names. So I'm all for it. And Amy, <laughs> you, you just really opened up the window because I know some people do go to uh, uh, patrons, go to libraries for audiobooks. Instead of paying, you know, spending 40 bucks for the audio, they, they borrow it on that. And is that a really, uh, it, should authors be doing the audio book spending? Because it says, because sometimes depending upon if you need a professional narrator or not, it could cost a couple of thousand dollars to put those together. Mm -hmm. Well, the answer is it depends. And the answer is if the timing is right. Mm -hmm. If you have, and I've, I've got some facts and figures here, which I'm happy to share with you, Judith. And if you'd like to post them on the author you cite after, I'll send you these screenshots. Terrific. Yeah. But according yes, to the same survey, the Library Journal Materials Survey, that the top circulator in adult print books, ebooks, and audiobooks, the number one genre in all three of the big formats is mystery and suspense. The number two in all three formats is general fiction. The number three is romance. And the number four is thrillers. So there's the top four. Now, once you, you can split off from there, but 97% of, of the fiction books in ebook and audiobook and print book taken out fiction, I'm talking about, 97% of the books taken out of the libraries are mystery, suspense, general fiction, romance, or thriller. The rest, the entire rest is made up of young adults, literary fiction, science fiction. So if those numbers are, are solid, if you have a, a fiction, a novel, in one of those genres, you might want to consider doing an audio book and doing it right. But the other thing I would suggest is make sure that your ebook and your print book are selling first. Prove to yourself there's some demand for your book before you start spending a lot of money on an audio book. Mm -hmm. And then let me ask you this, and, and the same data, what about nonfiction? I actually don't have the nonfiction okay. numbers in front of me. I am sorry. Um, 
The, okay. the numbers that they put forth, I was because they're so small in terms of ebooks and audiobooks, I didn't pull those, I'll be honest. So it's, prob- it's probably in that area. All right. So let, let's, you know, I think we're convinced that libraries are certainly a market and they are worth it. So what's happened with ebooks? Well, what's been happening in ebooks in the last two years is they have been growing in market share and in budget share, but they've not. They've not been growing at the level that they are in the retail marketplace. They've been growing much faster. The number of ebooks being sold in the retail marketplace is far outpacing the number of ebooks being borrowed from libraries. And when asked why by the American Library Association, when they did a survey in 2014, most of the patrons were unaware of how. They knew that libraries had ebooks but they weren't comfortable or they weren't aware of how to download them onto their, into, onto their device. And so there's a learning process going on right now. But the budget for eBooks right now in any library system is anywhere from 8 to 9% of their materials budget. So remember I said that libraries that service to half a million people or more had a $4.5 million budget on average? Almost 10% of that is dedicated to eBooks. So $400,000 or more, if it's 9% of that money is dedicated to eBooks. You want a part of that. You definitely do. And the way to get into eBooks is all through the, the proper wholesalers. I have a list here of wholesalers that if you go to Author You, Judith, what is the website that if people wanted to check out some of these, these links later they can go to? Um, they're going to go to authoru.org, and we will we will get those up. It's it's it will it won't happen this week. Uh, I can tell right. you this. You know this is but Thursday, if- but it's, this is live. But sometime in the next week we'll get them up. So authoru.org. You always want to look under resources, under the resources Correct. tab, under and resources. that's where they'll All show right. up. I suggest that you that you get signed up with the American Library Associ- Association, the ALA Buyers Guide. It's a free listing. You get your name of your book, the description of your book, the name of your publishing house, get everything set up in there. Then there are three ebook distributors that I recommend you try out. You need to sign up and, and apply to Baker and Taylor's Access 360, Access like the Access of a Wheel 360, Overdrive, which is the largest ebook distributor to libraries in the world, and ProQuest. ProQuest is one of the easiest ones to get into, but they're the smallest. You apply, you send them a sample of your ebook, they tell you whether or not you meet their criteria. And if you do not meet their criteria, you still have an option. You can go in through Smashwords. Smashwords has accounts with Baker and Taylor's Access 360 and Overdrive. And if you'd like to go into Smashwords, that's also a good option. But before you approach a library, or expect your ebook to be in any library system. It has to be in one of those wholesalers. So if they are with Smashwords, which I know several authors are, if they're with Smashwords, it's automatically available through B&T's Access 360 and Overdrive? And that's it's all they have to tell to the library? Ordered. It's not automatically in the libraries, but it is available. But libraries can reach forward and order it. All right. So they'll find it in their database is what I'm saying. If they're loaded into Smashwords, it would be automatically in a database? Yes, for Overdrive. Not for Baker and Taylor 360. They're still growing, but Overdrive, yes. And Overdrive is the granddaddy. That's the one you want to be in. Got it. All right. So we're going to take a quick break. Amy Collins and Libraries is what we're doing today, and we'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? 
If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602 602- 866-3226-1106-DESIGN. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being hoodwinked. If you already have a book out, you'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author you.org follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful First impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, so <clears throat> Amy Collins has given us some key information that the granddaddy, if you if going for ebooks and to be available to libraries is overdrive and going through that. And there's a you can apply directly. There's a back door you can come through if you're with Smashwords, um, which I've always recommended people work with because Mark Coker has put together a great uh, empire actually of information uh, and really very friendly and very helpful to the ebook creator. So you can be cataloged into there and then eventually Baker and Taylor will come along. That's been working along. And then the other one is ProQuest. Uh, and did I get all, th- was that the big three, Amy? Yes, those are the oh. three that I would recommend starting with. All right, there you go. All right, and then, so as we get into those in ebooks, Hey, let's let's say it's there. Okay, what happens next? Let's say that a library wants it. What do they pay? Well, let's talk about the the finances. It's different than if I went to Amazon or Kindle and bought a copy of your book, uh, Judith. If I decided I wanted your your ebook, I would go to Kindle and I'd buy it for eight ninety nine, nine ninety nine, and then it would be mine. Libraries work quite differently. A, a library will license an ebook from Overdrive. Let's use Overdrive as an example. They will buy a license for a book for, let's say, your book would be $89.99. And for that $89.99, the library is allowed to loan your book out for one year. At the end of that year, 
They can either re-up or not the license. If you prefer, and you can set it up this way, you can, and, it, and more popular authors do this, for eighty nine ninety nine, they can loan your book out 40 times. You know, you come up with a number. And then once the book has been loaned out 40 times, they need to re-up the, the license. And that is how publishers make more money on e-books and libraries than they do direct to consumer. It is not that you sell your book for nine ninety nine to a library and they get to loan it out for the rest of their lives. It's a licensing deal. All right. So if you have, and the licensing, it, it allows for so many downloads or what? Well, that's what I'm saying. Either okay. I, you either set the license for a certain mm -hmm. number of downloads, and once that download number has been hit, they have to re-up the license, or you set it for a certain period of time. I recommend you set it for a year or a two-year contract. Mm -hmm. That you don't set it for a certain number of downloads. That's more for the Stephen Kings of the world. <laughs> you, you want to make your life as easy as possible getting into these libraries. And, and so when you set it for that, though, help me out. When we set let's say we give them a year window, um, and, and so that's an unlimited download, correct? Yes. Um, okay. That and is, then, and then with it, so what, that, what kind of price do, would we put on that then? I'm sorry, Judith, what? What kind of price? Can you give us a guesstimate of what kind of price one would put on that? Normally, an ebook about, would sell, you know, anywhere uh, from two ninety nine to nine ninety nine. Let's say. I would take a a look at your retail price of your book, and if you look at what Harper Collins and Random House and the big guys are doing, they are licensing their ebooks for a period of time. Let's say one year, two libraries, mm -hmm. for anywhere from eight to nine times what the retail price of the book is. So if your book was seven ninety nine, Judith, I would sell it or license it to Overdrive to to license the libraries for roughly ninety dollars. Got it. All right. And then and then okay. So let's say let's use our ninety nine dollar ninety dollar fee. So Overdrive has licensed it out to ten different libraries. So that's nine hundred dollars. Nope. What kind of percentage nope. would I expect to get back as the author? You would get seventy percent of that. Okay, seventy percent. All right, that's excellent. So that gives everyone a good ballpark that they can work with in putting that together and what to expect. And so how many library systems are in the country, Amy? How many library systems? I don't know. Um, I, I, the, the rough numbers in 2014 was just over 7,000. But for 2015, I don't have those numbers yet. But last year, there were just over 7,000 library systems. Mm -hmm. And over 120,000 libraries, individual libraries in the country. Well, that's a lot of opportunities. You know, I, I don't think you need to be a mathematician to figure that out. Well, um, and keep in mind, a lot of those libraries are school libraries and university sure. libraries. But over sure. half of them are public libraries, which we're talking about. So, well, you know, you've opened that up. So is there a difference in how a, a school or a university, I, there's a difference between elementary high schools and universities, I'm, I'm thinking here. And the uh, public libraries are pretty easy to figure those out on how they buy or do they buy. Yes. The numbers that I'm giving you, all of these numbers that I'm giving you, when I say that 97% of the fiction books are in those four categories. When I talk about licensing the books from Overdrive, when I, all of these facts, figures, and advice that I'm giving is for public libraries. School libraries are a completely different animal, completely different animal. School licensing and educational licensing does not go through the same process, and we can do an entire another show on that, but right now I'm talking about public <laughs> libraries. Okay, so back to public libraries. I'm really interested in, personally, as an author, and I've got a couple of new books popping this year, um, in pushing in this direction. And actually, I just did the audio book to the crowdfunding book. Um, so, you know, kind of a one, I mean, I'm looking now at one, two, three on all of the things, the print, the E, and the audio. So that there's kind of a package. When authors do that, does it make sense to let a library know that you have all those those avenues immediately available? And if so, how would they go about doing that? Or, or, do, or do each one stand alone? Print goes here, E goes here, audio goes here. 
Well, the answer is just like anything else that will annoy you. It depends. <laughs> smaller. I'm sorry to say this. Smaller <laughs> libraries buy differently than larger libraries. So um, stop me if I get into too much detail. But as an author with a book in print, on ebook, and in audio, this is how you would proceed. You would contact the library, and one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to ask to speak to the collection development librarian. The, the acquisition librarian usually buys the fiction, chooses fiction, and collection development librarians usually choose nonfiction. Usually fiction and nonfiction, or what they call reference, are split into two different jobs, two very, very different buying criteria are used, so they usually split it between two of the library staff. That is for a smaller library, and when you reach out to the collection development librarian for a nonfiction book, you would say to her, I have this as a print book, I have it as an ebook, and I have it as an audio. You might also want to explain to them that you have this as a downloadable audio and as a CD, that you also have other electronic products that go with the book. That, that you know, when it comes to to a crowdsourcing, you also have a handout sheet that you know with a barcode that people can scan on their cell phone, and you have an app. There's a number of things that you can suggest to the acquisition development librarian of a smaller library. Let's say you were in San Diego or LA, and you were going to a library system out there, or or even Denver, where you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The librarians there are split by fiction and nonfiction, but they're also split by format. Usually, the ebook librarian, the print librarian, and the audiobook librarian are different people. So, in some in larger library systems, you will have to pitch your book more than once to more than one person. Now, the budgets show that 45 percent, roughly anywhere from 45 to 50 percent of the budgets right now are being spent on print books in the larger library system. In the smaller library systems, it's 65 to 70 percent. So if you really are focused on your audio book and your ebook, Judith, and you want to move that, I would wanna... suggest that you stay away from small markets because a lot more of the budget is being handled and pushed through the, and there's a lot more money in the larger larger systems library. yeah yeah so for example going back to uh colorado my home base is denver would be the denver would be the largest D denver douglas would be the largest so that's where if you're going to let them know you have all the bells and whistles with everything you're doing that's where you would pitch to those otherwise you're going to you know know that you start with print is is yes. that what i interpreted yeah yes and for anyone who's out there listening I want you to understand that getting your book into the Denver library system is a little like winning the Colorado lottery. Every <laughs> author is buying a ticket to get into the Denver library. If you cannot, if you, if you can't get past the gatekeepers, if you're getting constant no's, then go smaller, go to Fort Collins, go to Boulder, go smaller and smaller. You, yes, it's good to start big, but also understand the competition that you're facing. You're facing mm -hmm. a huge amount of competition when you go to the bigger library system. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I have to tell you, I did, uh, someone had given me a link years ago, and I was, um, it, it, actually, it's how I discovered that my book had been lifted and was being printed in Belgium and France without my knowledge, one of my books. But that I, it gave me a search capability to find out what libraries my books were in, and it was so much fun to see them. They arrange from, you know, locally the Arapaho. Denver and the Arapahoe County um, Library Districts to the Nelson Mandela in South Africa. That was so much fun to discover. I mean, who would know, right? Who would know? That's very cool. <laughs> yeah, and and truthfully, uh, that link. I'm assuming you're talking about WorldCat.org. Yes. Uh, world as in the globe, cat as in not a dog. dot org. WorldCat.org is the go-to site that I go to. Whenever I'm trying to find out where a client's book is stocked in libraries. Now, at this point, they're just dealing with print books and they're just starting to get into ebooks. Audiobooks are not, at the moment, aren't being listed, but that's changing.
All right, we'll come right back to that. We're going to take a quick break. Amy Collins is with us. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, we're back. We're ready to go global. We're around the world. We've checked out. We're going to go to world cat.org and probably find that our books are not all over the world but this is maybe a goal to reach for to find out where they are as Amy Collins says is where she checks out if her clients books have been picked up it also gives you an opportunity to see what the opportunity globally is because I think one of the things that's very important for all authors to think about it's just not your hometown where you're selling your book it's just not your city where you're selling your book, nor your state. You have to think globally, and that's what the Internet has brought to us. I mean, they're unbelievable selling opportunities. Wouldn't you agree, Amy? Yes. Yes, and growing every year. It's, it's getting bigger, not smaller. Yeah, and, I, and I've always told authors that I work with, the, the, you know, the Internet is your town hall. And it's for marketing and for those of you who are still digging your heels in and resistance, get over it. And unless you just you don't want to sell books. That's an, that's a whole other topic, which I'm not going to go down to. <laughs> but you need to realize what you can do here. The Internet really does open up phenomenal windows and research and things uh, that just we just didn't even have even five years ago the accesses that we have today. So it's a, it's a gold mine. I think it's it, literally it's a treasure trove for anyone who wants to sell books and places to go and find. So that's my two bits on that. Well, Amy, let's, let's just jump into um, 
some of the best ways, let's come back to our local person. Um, and let's start with the local, the local form, get our, get our, dig our heels in and get a hit. So if I go down to my local library, um, who, who would I ask for? You would ask to speak with the librarian who's, who makes the decision on stocking or shelving your type of book. So you'd say, I have a novel or I have a book about uh, pet care or I have a, a children's book. Who is the librarian who makes decisions on children's books? And then when they say, well, she's not here, you say, that's no problem. I, you know, may I leave a note or may I leave a copy of my book for her, him, don't mean to be sexist. Him, May I have but it's, her it's going to be her, most likely How her. Yeah. Prefer, I'm sorry, Judith? It will most likely be a her. You know, when I go it to will. the library meetings, it's 95% female. Yeah, so let's, for the, yeah. for the sake of simplicity, let's say it's a her. Then you simply say, well, how does she like to be contacted? Shall I come back in again? Uh, shall I send an email? This is how you approach your local librarian. It's nice, especially if you're a local author, to have your feet in their library when you ask them to shelve your book. You know, it's more comfortable to do it from your living room via email. But keep in mind that librarians are judged just like any other book buyer in the industry. They're judged by how successful they are at shelving books and putting books on their shelves that are successful. Successful books are books that bring patrons into the library. Successful books are books that have a strong turn. A turn is the number of times that the book is checked out, returned, and then checked out again. A successful library, a well-run library, has a really talented acquisition librarian or a collection development librarian, who, and she's got goals. And if you understand her goals, that she wants a book that will be in demand, a book that will bear up, that will absolutely be attractive and will have all of the elements she's looking for, a book that's coded properly, that has a Library of Congress, CIP, catalog and publication block in the copyright page so that she doesn't need to mess around with what Dewey Decimal Code it is. She can just glance at the copyright page. She knows exactly where to shelve the book. Make her job easy, and you will have a much better chance of getting your book onto her shelf. And so if you're going to physically go in, which I would always recommend if you can um, for your locals, is is it a good idea to have a couple of extra books with you and give them one? Absolutely. Nothing sells a book like a book. You, If you are going to ask somebody to consider stocking your book, you need to give them a copy so they know what they're looking at. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm always amazed, Amy, where... Authors are afraid to give away books, and they don't realize they're seeding. This is part of the fertilizing factor that goes on. And that, that you know, I've given books away with, with strings attached, um, including you need to, you know, after you read it, would you please put a review up? Um, whether it's pro or con, you want to add reviews to the laundry list on Amazon and Goodreads and Shelf Sorry and, you know, all these other ones that make sense to go for. And, and Amy, let me ask you this. Um, where, what are your resources that, in your experience right now, that librarians are going for to check out reviews, to get information about, to add to their collections? Library Thing, librarything.com is a fantastic place to get reviews. They have an early review program for new books that are still in the first few months of publication. And this is a place where librarians are offered copies of books to, you can offer 15 copies, 20, you can offer 100 copies. I don't care. We stick to 15 to 30. But you, you offer your book to librarians to see if they would write a review on library thing. And then let's say 200 of them say yes. If, you, if you've offered 25 copies of the book, you then choose, library thing will then choose 25 of the librarians who are interested in reviewing your book at random and you send them a copy of your book. This is a fantastic way to get librarians to be interested in your book and to recommend it to other libraries. Oh, I love this idea. This is such a great idea. And I saw, I hope everybody heard this library thing.com go to it. And what you do, is there a cost to uh, uh, putting something up there? 
No, you do need to be approved as a publisher, so you have to apply first as a publisher. But if you're a small press, even with one book, that is very, very easy to do. So that's ideal because I know that, it, you know, through the, the ABA, they have their deal for $150. You can put out a kind of not like an ad, but you can put out – this is another way for people to do – to reach out bookstores that you can pay $150 and they'll put it out to like a 1000 of their bookstores offering a book for consideration to bring in and you can say I'll give out X amount and you send it to them. And the great news is – and the same thing I suspect with library thing. If someone says, yes, I want a book, guess what? You have a live person who says, I'm interested in this book. You're going to get an email on that, and you have the capability of following up. Would that be correct, Amy? Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, that is exactly how it works. It's it's less expensive. It's yeah. more effective. Another great place, a place that I would recommend people looking is Goodreads. As you know, Judith, Goodreads is owned by Amazon. If there's an Amazon review, it also shows up on Goodreads. But you do not want to tell a librarian to go to Amazon.com. That's no. a little tacky. Actually, it's very tacky. So, But pointing a librarian to your Goodreads book page and seeing, and if the librarian there sees that there's 40 or 50 reviews from, from different readers, now, again, you need at least 40 or 50. Pointing somebody to your Goodreads page so them to look at 11 reviews is not is going to be a waste of their time. But get 40 or 50 reviews on Goodreads, start pointing librarians to them, and we're in good shape. So I've learned two things. One is that um, if, if there's a review on Amazon, it'll automatically be slapped into Goodreads, which I didn't know they were doing. So is that new? I don't know if it's new. I know it's been going on most of 2015. Um, and okay. if they weren't doing it before, they are doing it now. Yeah, okay, so that's new. That's hot. Also, I was told by the president of the Library Association that they don't like to go to Amazon at all. That was a direct quote. But they do go yeah. to Goodreads, although, as Amy and I both are very clear on, Amazon owns Goodreads. They will go to Goodreads, because they want to see what the customers are saying about the books, although these are Amazon customers too. What the heck? Anyway, they will add to it. So that's very smart. And the library thing is incredibly hot to take advantage of. And so I would actually budget. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to budget 50. I would, I would bump it up. I'm, you know, 20. Um, I would bump my deal up because libraries are so powerful in what they can do in the word of mouth and getting it up and I would put allocate 50 books for me I would and I would just say and see who comes in and as Amy says you're going to cherry pick if you get a thousand people say want their book well good for you um, but and, and decide and then you get them out you know you have the capability now of following up to make sure they got the book and to see you know get impact um, uh, their in, input I mean I, that's just hugely valuable Hugely valuable. And if they wrote, if they wrote a terrific review for you. Make sure you ask them if they're going to buy a copy from their library. And, and and not only that, you're also going to take a copy of that review and you're going to shout it out. You're going to put it on your website, um, and you're also going to take that now. Here's the next step. You're going to take a copy of that review, and you're going to go in, and you're going to put it in on your reviews on your Amazon page for your book. So, you know, this is, this is all marketing. This is all work that you need to do to promote yourself. So I love that tip. So that sounds terrific. All right. And then we so we've got library thing. We've got Goodreads is absolutely imperative. We've got about we've got about a minute to our next break. Any other little tidbit we can throw in, Amy, before we go into our final segment? I have one caveat I'd love to throw oh, out. Caveats, I love them. Please guys skip the Goodreads giveaways. They the Goodreads giveaway program has done little to nothing for any of my clients to increase their sales. Yes, you should be giving away your books, but give them away smartly. Give them to buyers. Give them to decision makers. Make the readers buy your book. Make the decision makers, you know, give them to them for free. 
Yeah, and where library thing is you've got decision makers or people who will be influencing and chit-chatting because let me tell you, librarians um, really do interact with each other. And if they see something they love, they let other librarians that may be in that genre, that buyer, didn't hear about it, but they will now because that librarian came across it. We're going to be right back with uh, Amy Collins. We're talking about how to get your book into libraries and really enhance your sales. This is Judith Bryles, and it's Author You, your guide to book publishing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at MyBookShepherd and on Facebook at TheBookShepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from one to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book. If you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, it's Author You, your guide to book publishing. I'm Dr. Judith Bryles. With me is Amy Collins, and we're talking about one of my favorite topics. I have always loved libraries. As a kid, they were my refuge, and I hid out in them because I was a book nut. And um, and plus, they were warm on a cold day, and they were cool on a hot day. It was a very good place to find and I grew up, you know, we were kids, and there was always a library you could walk to very, you know, very short period of time. It's not so easy in our our communities, the way everything is so stretched out and you need wheels to get everywhere. But still, libraries are libraries, and they are a hub 
for learning. One of my favorite sayings years ago, I was president of a uh, college foundation. And one of the perks was we used to have, um, you know, these celebs come in and do these, you know, these uh, series, these speaker series. And as the president, one of my perks was I used to have get to have dinner with, with them, them all before they spoke. And one of my favorites was Ray Bradbury, the sci-fi, brilliant, brilliant um, author man. And that one of the things that Ray said to me that has stuck in my head for over 40 years was his attitude about education was this, just lock children in the library, open the doors when they are 18, they will be fully educated. <laughs> and Amy, I have never forgotten his words. Never forgotten them. Wow. Yes. A little uh, <laughs> creepy, but probably true. <laughs> they will learn everything. Okay. So with that said, um, let's, say we, let's say we actually have reached out to our local library and there we had an enthusiastic response. What do we do next? How do we take the next step, the next leap to move beyond being the local celeb author to maybe the city celeb, the state celeb, the national celeb, the global celeb? How do we do that? Well, you have to do it via email, mail, and phone. And it's a very simple process. This is not difficult. You send them a cover letter in your email. And the cover letter goes something like this. Dear, and make sure you use the person's name, pick up the phone, find out who the acquisition librarian is. Do not send a cover letter that says, Dear Librarian. Dear Betsy, my book, uh, Judith, what's, what's the actual name of your book on, on crowdfunding? The Crowdfunding Guide for Authors and Writers. Dear Betsy, the crowdfunding guide for authors and writers is doing very, very well in the Colorado market. I am now reaching out to Utah libraries because you have a huge writers community in Utah and the proximity of the marketing I'm doing in Colorado makes a great deal of sense. So what that opening statement has done is this is what my book is. This is why it makes sense for you to consider the book. You notice I'm not talking to you just about how great your book is. I haven't exactly. mentioned your credentials. I haven't even mentioned your name. All mm -hmm. I've mentioned is that you have a book that's doing very well in a nearby market and that you're do I've thrown in there that you're doing some marketing and that it makes sense for them to consider the book because the draw and the number, number of authors and writers in their community, you've done your research. You have just given them four reasons to consider your book in the first sentence. Mm -hmm. None of it has to do with how good the book is. Second point that you want to make is the book is available from Ingram, Baker, and Taylor, the ebooks available from Overlord. You, you, you mentioned where the book's available from. Second point, I know how hard your job is, and I've just made it easy for you. You can find this book at the following places. There's an audio book available from blah, blah, blah. Just throw it right out there. Mm -hmm. I would very much like to send you a copy of this book for your consideration attached to this email is a, an encoded PDF with a little bit more information if you're interested. Please, please know I know how busy you are. I will be in touch next week to see if I may send you a copy of the email or feel free to respond to this email. And let me know where I may send the book. Sign it. Now, Judith, I wouldn't sign your name, if, even if you're the one sending this. I would sign right. it with John's name or with an assistant name. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be the author reaching out to an out-of-state or an out-of-town. You lose your the the... The edge that you get when you're a local author is gone when you're not a local author. And at this point, what you'd like to do is pitch your book as, as a member of your team. You, you want to show some business-like acumen. So pitch the book through a member of your team. Get the email out there. The, the PDF that you're including is a one-page sales sheet. A copy of your press release, show the librarian you, that you've used the press release, you know how to market, a copy of your marketing plan. And, Judith, if you're a speaker, as I know you are, and if you're, if you're an author who's written a book on a particular topic, a one sheet on the author. This is where I've spoken. This is where my YouTube videos are, a one sheet. Put all this in a, in a one packet PDF. Do not send them five attachments. It will annoy them. Combine them all into one PDF send them the email. 
follow up with them a few days later if you haven't heard. So the information about the book goes in the PDF. It does not go on and on and on in your cover letter. Your cover letter simply says, I understand your job. I'm here to make your job easier. This book will help you reach your goals. Does that make sense? It's perfect. It makes perfect sense. And I, I think what uh, when I say this, I know you've said it, when agents are looking at ideas, when editors are looking at ideas, if if it isn't succinct and clear within a couple of sentences within that first paragraph or two, it's over. It's over. And so what you've outlined for the librarian, treating them in the same kind of uh, respect, actually, I think it's a respect issue um, that that, you know, this is what I this is what this is. This is, you know, who it's type of for um, and that you understand their market a little bit um, that it, it just it opens up a, a lot of doors. It, it's work. I mean, this is all the marketing work that goes on. And you're going to have on these kind of these kind of cover letters um, will have a great deal of similarity, but there's going to be a, maybe a, a little twist in one of the sentences about the location or something else, just to let them know that you, you, and it could you, and, you know, you're sending it maybe with someone else's name, but you are savvy to to their environment, um, and I, I think that gives you a home run possibility. Yes. It does. And the key is the follow-up. These people get, I had a librarian at the Library Association, the ALA uh, conference last year, tell me that she receives over 4,000 book proposals a month. Over 4,000 a month. Whoa. Whoa. (laughs) And she was a librarian in a mid-sized city in Ohio. She was from Cleveland. So don't even talk to me about LA, New York. Yes, we all want our, our books in Chicago. But Cleveland, for heaven's sakes, gets over 4,000 books a month. So please be aware that you are what you're doing is you're not competing on how good your book is. You're competing on how good of a business person you are. And that's, and that's where you want to be. This is, now we're going to go back to one of my things I harp on is that it, when you start treating your publishing and your authoring as a business, you are way ahead of the crowd, and too many authors really come in and they diddle. They're diddlers and they're hobbyists and they really don't give it the attention and the care that it needs. So, you know, that's my bandwagon I get on. All the well, time. and it's a good one. This is a business, this is no different. All right, so let's talk about, you know, one of the things that's happening with Author U um, is that that we're doing some restructuring. I'm going to be announcing it probably next week formally, but I'll just give a head start that we're going to have, we, we have uh, three categories. One of them has a sub, and basically we've just had two. I mean, we have our associates, people like Amy, who are providers of services for authors. Um, and myself as a book shipper, I'm a provider for services as an author. I would be in the associate crowd. And then there's you as listeners who are authors of a variety of different uh, types and styles of books. And you are members. So we're going to have a uh, – right now there is just – one membership, and uh, that's going to be relabeled the gold membership, and that's where, and that's ninety nine dollars a year. But then there's going to be a bestseller, and those are for the people who get that this is a business, and they really want to be seriously successful. And by golly, they're signing up for. It. They realize it's this is not a fifty dollar investment. This is this going to take a little bit more money. It's going to take a little bit more than the ninety nine dollar membership because I need to show up. I need to attend things. I need to come to events. And like Amy's been one of our speakers for the last few years on the Author You Extravagant. Ganza, and she will be again next year, and that that's a commitment that's almost five hundred dollars. So you know that's in addition to it. So we're creating the bestseller category, and the bestseller category will just automatically have that prepaid. And we're going to be creating a uh, the uh, online author you online book publishing summit 
that is going to roll out in uh, February 26th and 27th. And everyone who attends that will be free. It's free live. But if you want to listen to any of the sessions, which most people want to, and actually what happens, and certainly we see it with webinars, you know, we may get 600 people who sign up for a webinar, but maybe only 280 show up live because the rest of them know they can get it free download. Well, not with the online summit because you're going to have to pay to get all those downloads. Well, if you're a bestseller member, you just get it. And so there's the various things that even like Amy and I, we do our wonderful Publishing at Sea conference every January. And there is going to be a coupon worth $100 off for the bestsellers because we know they're so committed to do that. So that's our bestseller category. And depending upon if you're local in Colorado, that has a certain fee. If you're a national or international member, it's a different fee because there are other additional events that happen on the local. And then there is the basic membership, which anybody can join, and that is the magic free price. And the free price will allow you to listen to our webinars live. It will allow you to get our easing, which is 60 pages every quarter, and you get that for free. Um, it's, it's the ability to get every Monday um, an hour of free coaching uh, from Michelle DeFlippo and myself. That's free. But anything else... There's a fee to upgrade. So watch for this rollout. And one of the benefits that the fabulous Amy Collins is giving to our gold members deals with libraries. So, Amy, why don't you explain that? Well, on our website, we sell a very large database of the top public library contacts in the U.S., as well as a sample template cover letter email and a sample template for your sales sheets. And remember I said all the things you should put in the PDF? We sell that as a package for $99. But if you are a a top member of AuthorU, if you sign up for the the premier level, that's half price. It's $49.99 for your members. And there's a link that is only accessible to the top tier members. And that link is given to them once they once they sign up and it's it's an amazing at $99 it's an amazing deal but at 49 mm-hmm. i mean that's just fantastic yeah they are so if you want to get into library land which you should for heaven's sakes Take advantage of this. So join Author You. Anyone who's a member now automatically will be made a gold member. Um, and all you have to do is go to authoryou.org and you will be seeing uh, there will be a whole matrix of all the goodies and perks from Ingram and Bowker for your ISBNs. They will all be laid out for you. And with that, we're going to have to close up for this session of Author You, your guide to book publishing. Thank you so much, Amy Collins, for being with us today. Thank you. You are welcome. And we will be with you next week. Meanwhile, keep on writing and get ready to publish the book that you will never regret. This is Judith Bryles. We'll see you next week. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each week, a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take you, the author, to the next level. You'll learn tips and secrets on how to create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve book publishing success by making one very simple change in your book's journey. How to avoid the publishing predators. How to create an author and book platform that rocks. Learn how to make a living with your words and your books. Learn how to publish a book that has no regrets and so much more. For more information, check out AuthorU.org, where authors who want to be seriously successful go. And Judith's website, TheBookShepherd.com. Then join us again here next week for more. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Brought to you by AuthorU and The Book Shepherd. Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific on the Rockstar Radio Network.